This is the Value Investor Podcast with Tracy Reinick. All things value, all the time. Welcome back, value investors. So most companies have now reported their first quarter earnings, and we're, we are basically figuring out who is cheap, who's dirt cheap, <laughs> who is trading with you know super low PEs, price to sales ratios, that kind of stuff. Now, on the Market Edge podcast that I recently did, this is the episode that was five stocks under $5 for newbie traders on that episode of the Market Edge. I found a company that was trading for just 3.8 times forward earnings and it had a Zach's rank of a number two buy. So that got me thinking, like, what else is super cheap like that? And maybe I can find them in the Zach's rank number ones. Um, so I ran a screen looking for the number ones only, which remember is only about 220 stocks, give or take some, but it's it's a small number. And then I looked for a PE under 20, but I was really only going to pull out the ones that were much cheaper and a price to sales ratio under one, because why not put the price to sales in there? Gives us like a double whammy of cheapness right now with everything going on in the global economy. If we can find something that's trading with both of those metrics that are real cheap, I say that's a good thing and uh, gives us even a little more value firepower, especially as those uh, earnings are kind of messed up right now, as I've talked about on prior episodes, just because of all the cuts that are going on. But the number ones, remember, should give us earnings increases. Someone is raising their earnings estimate on these companies, hopefully. So it did give me 25 matches, which is a little more than I thought I might get. And so that's encouraging that there's 25 number ones that are pretty cheap here. And so I took a look at the list and I pulled out um, four of them that were among the cheapest just on a PE level. And then I added a fifth one of one that I've talked about in the past just to kind of revisit it because it still remains a Zach's number one and to talk about some kind of cautionary advice with with that one. <laughs> so I'll get to that at the end. But uh, let's dive right in and see, like, what are the super dirt cheap stocks that are number ones with these good two value metrics, the PE and the price to sales ratios. So the first one is Atlas Air Worldwide. Ticker is AAWW. Now it has a PE of just 4.9. That's why I pulled it out, right? I was like, well, what's going on with this one? Price to sales of just 0.4. So dirt cheap single digit PE here, but two estimates have moved higher in the last 60 days and pretty dramatically. They are now looking for 845 this year versus 665 just 60 days ago. And Atlas only made 524 last year. That's earnings growth of 61.3% during a global pandemic. So I was curious, obviously, has air in the title. What do they do? They are mainly a cargo airline with charter service, but they run like Titan Air, Atlas Air, and Southern Air. They just agreed to a 10% increase for pilot salaries during the pandemic to give them a little bit of a boost. So um, some costs going up, but they saw a huge increase in cargo for the first quarter. As you can imagine what was going on, remember everybody needed PPE. They needed um, you know, just supplies, medical supplies, food, Drugs, all of this is being uh, shipped quickly around the globe, basically. So they had to reactivate three of their 747 converted freighters to meet up with demand. And they saw these positive trends continue into the second quarter. So that's where you get analysts just as positive on what is going on, at least for this year, with Atlas. Now, the shares have soared. They're up 46% year-to-date, even with the cheap cheap PEs. So people been in this trade, they've already done it, but they have fallen back 16% off the June highs, got a little too hot to handle. People exited with their gains and it's come down a bit. So maybe it's worth a look at this one with that low PE and price to sales ratio and hoping that cargo is still going to be hot 
for the next couple of quarters. So that's Atlas Air, A-A-W-W -W is the ticker. Okay, then like moving on to the second stock, I was a little dubious on this one because I knew it was energy related. Oasis Midstream Partners, ticker OMP, PE is just 2.99, price to sales is 0.82. And three estimates did move higher in the last 60 days, but only by four cents, so not as dramatic as Atlas, but still moving higher. They're looking for 337 versus 333 just 60 days ago. And that's a little bit below last year where they made 341. So 1% earnings decline. Now, these shares are still down 42% year to date. They are off their lows in uh, March where they had been down 82%. So they have had quite a rally here, um, but still down pretty dramatically. Now, Oasis is a a master limited partnership. So it does pay a dividend and that is treated as a partnership income. So consult your tax advisor before buying these kinds of companies. Now you might go over to look at that dividend and go, oh my gosh, 22% and freak out that it's paying that kind of yield. So of course I had to investigate to see if it's paying anything. As we know, many companies are suspending or cutting their dividends this year. So they did pay a 54% distribution in Q1, but it's based on the earnings from that quarter. And in Q1, they did exceed guidance on the volumes across most of their commodity streams. So they had the good, strong first quarter. They could pay it out, so they did. That's what they do. <laughs> they pay you as a partner out the earnings, but might not be so great going forward into Q2 because they said they're now watching as the customers have curtailed their volumes. And they said it will, quote, put significant downward pressure, unquote, on Q2 volumes and their cash flow. And they're cutting the CapEx as a result. So I don't know what the distribution is going to be in Q2. So don't believe the 22% on that one, at least going forward. But that being said, they are the midstream. They do terminal transportation compression and gathering of gas, a little bit on the crude. They have a 324 million market cap. So if you're into these kinds of stocks, and I know many of you are for like income reasons, then this is a, this is a dirt cheap one of these. Again, PE is just 2.99, price of sales is 0.8, and their ticker is OMP. M is in Mary, P is in Paul, okay? Okay, so third stock, Tudor Perini. Ticker TPC. I know I've talked about these guys off and on. Did I just talk about them recently? I probably did because they remain dirt cheap. PE is just six. Price to sales is just 0.13. And they are like the civil engineering construction side. So whenever those infrastructure plans are kind of rolled out, they get a boost, right? But there's good things happening with the estimates as well. Two estimates are up in the last 60 days. Analysts are now looking for $2.10 versus $1.80 just 60 days ago. They only made $0.70 cents last year, so that's earnings growth of 200%. So they really do have the deal with the earnings rising here. Now, year-to-date, these shares are down still, but only 1%. And But they're up big off those March lows, so they really crashed down. They have been uh, catching a bid here recently, and again, anytime infrastructure is mentioned or any kind of stimulus around construction, these shares go higher. Now, I feel like they want to test that 2020 high that they had earlier this year, and then we'll see where these shares go. But that's Tudor Perini, ticker TPC for that one. And then I uh, got a little bit uh, kind of uh, like, you know, thinking about what other stocks I wanted to put on this list. So I'm going with the financial. It's super cheap. Donnelly Financial Solutions, DFIN is the ticker. PE of just 5.5. Price to sales is 0.35. We only have one estimate on this one, which is why I was a little bit a little bit dubious on adding it, but a lot of these companies, you know, are very uh, not followed as, as much as the big name guys. So only getting the one estimate here. 
Their estimates look good, though. They are expected to make $1.63 this year. They only made $1.17 last year. That's earnings growth of 39%. And the one that has raised in the last 60 days, they were at 135 and now are at the 163. So what's happening with these guys? You kind of see uh, you know, financial solutions and you're wondering what it's about. So they're a global risk and compliance company and they have software that's the big driver here then um, that does data analytics they also do like transi transition uh, transactions and so they're involved in ipos and MA. that has slowed it like crashed down basically in q1 but it's slow slowly recovering but it's still slow is what they said but in Q1, they had record software solution sales, and those sales now made up 21.4% of total sales, up from 19.5 a year ago. So 190 basis points gains on the revenue side um, of the total revenue for software solutions. And we know that that kind of um, that area software has been hot. So, yeah, Donnelly Financial Solutions, DFIN, looking kind of interesting here. And um, these shares still are down year to date, down 19% year to date. So still cheap one and kind of unknown. It's kind of a one that nobody's talking about. And then I'm going to switch over to the fifth stock. This was not among the cheapest on the list, but I have talked about it before, and I wanted to look at it again. This is B&G Foods, ticker BGS. This is the green giant maker, and uh, they have a whole bunch of other brands as well. And these are like kind of uh, processed foods, I guess, frozen foods, things that you buy at the supermarket that you want to last for a while because you are in the lockdown. So I maybe can't go to the store every week to buy my fresh broccoli. So I'm buying the green giant at the store to keep in my freezer for when I cannot go and get the fresh stuff. I can still whip out the frozen and, uh, you know, put that in my meal. So Green Giant, all that was super huge in the first quarter. And so these estimates are all up higher, as I've talked about in the past. They're looking for $1.99 now this year, up from $1.67 in the last two months. Two estimates are higher. They only made $1.64 last year, so that's 21% growth on the earnings side. These shares are up 36% year-to-date, though. And they're still kind of trending towards their high. They still have some upward momentum. So they're cheap, but they're not dirt cheap. PE is now 12.2. Price to sales is hanging in there at 0.9. But I wanted to include them just to point out, they still remain the Zach's number one rank strong buy. And I'm pretty sure they were the last time I talked about them too. But um, now those earnings estimates are 60 days out. So they're holding on to the number one rank, but I don't know for how much longer they may be holding on to that. And also for some of these food-based or uh, pandemic type of stock plays like BG, B and G Foods, where their customers changed behavior and now restaurants are opening and the economy is reopening, that behavior is likely to change again, which B&G Foods would acknowledge. They don't expect the Green Giant sales to stay as elevated as it was at the height of the pandemic when you were afraid to leave your house, right? So now I can go to that farmer's market, which has started up again. I can go to the supermarket um, or I'm more willing to more often to get the fresh. And so I might not be buying as much Green Giant. So this play might be done now. I'm just pointing out, yes, it's still cheap, but uh, you know we may not see much more growth in those earnings estimates throughout the rest of this year. But it all remains to be uh, said, we don't know how much consumer behavior is going to change. Will you be eating out enough where you're not buying um, the food at the supermarket as much or 
um, will you still be hunkering down more than you have in years past so these sales remain elevated? We don't know. So I just want to talk about B&G Foods again to point out while it still is X number one and we still have those estimates moving higher, those that movement was from the pandemic movement. And some of these others don't have that same thing, although Atlas Air kind of is a pandemic play as well because they too saw the surge as a result of the pandemic in the cargo. But they said they've held it at least into the second quarter. So, but that's another one you might want to remain cautious on. Some of these others just kind of in the right place at the right time and having um, a good year so far and maybe stayed open as essential businesses. I believe all these other ones would have been essential business. I know Tudor Perini was essential. Donnelly as a financial was essential. And they said they had everyone working from home and Oasis as energy would have also been essential. So that helps. And you can see it in these earnings estimates. So let's recap the cheap stocks for this week. Some of these are intriguing, I have to admit. Atlas Air Worldwide, AAWW. Then we had Oasis Midstream Partners, OMP. But remember, the dividend is quarterly, and it looks like it might be challenged in the second quarter on that one. Uh, but still super cheap, 2.99 on the PE. Then we had Tudor Perini. This is the construction side, PE of just six. TPC. Then we had Donnelly Financial Solutions. This is kind of interesting to get like a finance with the software with the PE of just 5.5. That's DFIN. And then B&G Foods, again, making the list because it's doing a lot of things right. BGS is the ticker there. And as always, I keep looking for the cheap stocks. We're going to be heading into the second quarter earnings season coming up shortly, actually pretty quickly here in the summer in July. So a lot of those are going to involve the banks. I am going to take another look at the banks, looking to see if there's any value there or, or if they're traps, what's happening with them. Uh, that'll be an interesting show. So you want to subscribe. Be sure to get all of our episodes. We are on Spotify as a standalone. We're also on Apple Podcasts under Value Investor Podcast. And you can find us two for one. And you can listen in on that other Market Edge podcast I was talking about with the five stocks under $5, including the one trading at just 3.8 times um, on SoundCloud. Get us under Market Edge, Zach's Market Edge over there, and you'll get two episodes a week. So that's a good deal. Deal. But be sure to get us somewhere, and I'll be back again next week with some more stocks. This material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified I've described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.